Ulcerative colitis is characterized by recurring episodes of inflammation limited to mucosal layer of the colon. While Crohn's disease can affect any part of our intestines, ulcerative colitis only affects the sigmoid colon, the rectum, and the anus. In fact, ulcerative colitis almost always involves the rectum. Ulcerative colitis spreads proximally from rectum in a continuous pattern and from there the disease will spread up the colon. So what are the main pathological features of ulcerative colitis inflammation? The inflammation in ulcerative colitis is continuous in contrast to the patchy lesions in CD or Crohn's disease. You can find superficial erosion or ulcers which involve only the mucosa and the submucosa. Unlike Crohn's disease, no serosa or muscularis is involved here. We can notice thinning of the colonic wall. Another one of the main pathological findings of ulcerative colitis is that the colon normally loses its normal horse trunk or the wave-like projections inside the colon and this gives a lead pipe appearance in contrast enema imaging. The involved colonic mucosa can show extensive broad-based ulcers. These ulcers affect the colon and the rectum so much that it makes the normal parts of the colon look abnormal. These isolated islands of the regenerative mucosa surrounded by parts of the inflamed colon will appear raised, giving them a so-called pseudopolyp appearance. On histology, we can see mucosal edema, congestion, inflammatory infiltrates and crypt abscesses. So over here in figure A, we have an endoscopic view of severe ulcerative colitis with ulceration. So in figure B over here, we have a complete colectomy with, uh, which shows active disease and with red granular mucosa in the cecum, the left side of it. And in figure C over here, we can see a sharp demarcation between active ulcerative colitis which is at the bottom and the normal mucosa at the top. And in D, this full thickness histologic section shows that ulcerative colitis is limited to the mucosa only. Let's talk about the common patterns of disease distribution in inflammatory bowel disease. So when we speak about the common patterns of disease distribution in UC, majority of them, around 40-50% to 50 have proctitis, which is the most common location in the sigmoid colon and around 30 to 40 percent have left-sided colitis which involves the whole of descending colon and in 20 percent of cases the whole colon is involved which is extensive colitis when prevalence is concerned in ulcerative colitis it is more prevalent in north america and europe and usually the age of onset is between 15 to 40 years so it's very common in young people so what are the clinical features and symptoms of ulcerative colitis? Patients with ulcerative colitis almost always presents with diarrhea, sometimes with blood. And there is mucus in stools and bowel movements are frequent and small in volume as a result of rectal inflammation. Apart from that, these patients commonly present with abdominal pain classically on the left side which reflects the location of the distal sigmoid colon. They will also have fever because of the inflammation vomiting due to abnormal bowel movements and because of impaired digestion they will have weight loss upon examination there will be abdominal rebound tenderness and sometimes in severe cases there will be abdominal wall rigidity they will also present with arthritis many joint pains and hepatic and bile duct complications like gallstones one of the unique extra-intestinal manifestations of ulcerative colitis is primary sclerosing cholangitis which is an autoimmune disorder of intra and extra hepatic biliary ducts. We can also see pyoderma and erythema which are rashes in the skin and also ocular complications like conjunctivitis and sores or ulcers in the mouth. The complications of ulcerative colitis so the most important complication of ulcerative colitis is toxic megacolon. That's when the inflammation extends to the colonic smooth muscle which results in smooth muscle paralysis ultimately ending up with colonic dilation and symptomatic systemic toxicity. If the colon is dilated more than 6 cm we consider it as toxic megacolon condition. Toxic megacolon leaves the colon in such a weakened state that perforation is such a common consequence. And this perforation can result in massive colon hemorrhage which is less than 3% in incidence. 
but if it's too severe this can lead to hypovolemic shock also it is important to know that ulcerative colitis increases the risk of colon cancer even more than crohn's disease but the risk of cancer development is directly proportional to the severity and the duration of the disease Let's talk about the lab findings in an ulcerative colitis patient. So when we do a blood test, we can see low hemoglobin and albumin levels. Low hemoglobin because of the loss of blood with stools and low albumin because the colon cannot do the protein digestion function properly now because it's uh, impaired. So blood albumin level will also be low. On the other hand, we will have a CRP or C-reactive protein and ESR increment because it's an indication of inflammation and if we take a stool specimen we can see mucus bloody stools and the patient will sometimes be positive for pianca and asca pianca stands for perinuclear antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies and asca stands for antisaccharomyces cerevisial antibodies which is often present in ulcerative colitis endoscopy and radiological findings so when we do an endoscopy we can see diffuse erythema mucosal edema and the loss of fine vascular patterns and there's a granular appearance with mucosal bleeding and strictures but strictures are very common in Crohn's disease so there's a standard endoscopic grading of ulcerative colitis from 0 to 4 0 being normal and 4 being the most severe case which is ulceration this can be used to grade an ulcerative colitis patient this is a plain abdominal x-ray showing a grossly dilated colon due to severe ulcerative colitis. So if it's dilated more than 6 cm, it's a toxic megacolon condition. And in the second picture over here, the hostra of the colon have disappeared and the normal wave-like appearance of the colon is gone and the colon looks straightened. So this is the lead pipe appearance. In more severe chronic cases of ulcerative colitis, a benign stricture in the transverse colon of the patient can be seen. There is also something called the True Love and Witt Severity Index for ulcerative colitis, which categorizes ulcerative colitis as mild, moderate, and severe, depending on the frequency of defecation, the bloody stools, the presence and absence of fever, tachycardia, anemia, etc. So it's classified as severe ulcerative colitis if the frequency of defecation per day is six times or more and the fever level is 37.5 degrees or higher. So what are the differential diagnoses of ulcerative colitis? Number one is obviously Crohn's disease which is very similar to ulcerative colitis except that Crohn's disease occurs in all the layers of the GI tract. And then we have infectious colitis, intestinal lymphoma, intestinal tuberculosis, and irritable bowel syndrome, which are also differential diagnoses of ulcerative colitis. That is all. Thank you for watching. Show us your support on Patreon. Subscribe for similar content and click that bell icon. Don't forget to check out this playlist and follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram to stay tuned. Minute Med, where medicine is made fun.